Another beautiful night to be outside. Hey, there's Lakeside Amusement Park, not too far from where we're situated in lower downtown Denver. 20th and Blake Street, Coors Field, the place tonight, the Rockies and Arizona Diamondbacks. Game two of a four-game set. And welcome, everybody, upstairs with Jeff Houston. I'm Drew Goodman. Last night was the night that the Arizona Diamondbacks dominated. They won 15 to 5. They had 19 hits. The runs and hits all season highs. So trying to quiet that offense this evening will be Jolie Chassin. And since he's returned from the DL, he really has pitched well. Yeah, he has that confidence again that you need to play at the major league level. And it's good to see because sometimes as players, we trick ourselves and think, oh, I can go out there at 60, 70 percent and perform. Well, Yulis was that guy. He never spoke up, never said, I'm hurting. I need to take some time off. But since he's come back, he has been the pitcher that you expected to see. He's got the confidence. The fastball is coming back. Back, the hard slider and the change-ups in the batting average again since he's been back is about 60 points lower. The ERA almost five runs a game lower. So that tells you that he has that mindset that I'm okay. I can go out and compete and use my stuff. And he's going deeper into the ball game too. And that's the that's the other positive thing that he's pitched seven innings once. His last start was five innings against the Giants. Just one earned run. I know next year is still six, seven months away, but he's got to be a staple in that rotation a year from now. He does. Be, he's got to be that ace, and he's getting to that point in his career, not only ex as far as experience, but years that he knows he needs to take that step. Absolutely. When we come back, we'll talk about the guy that will catch him this evening, Willene Rosario. Rosario, Diamondbacks with that victory last night have reached 500. The Rockies with a record of 58 and 92. 
Drew Goodman and Jeff Houston. Well, Ian Rosario, we've talked all about the defense. He has to clean it up. He has to get better in terms of pass balls. We understand that. But offensively, there's been significant growth. And there has. And for a young player to separate defense and offense and do what he's been able to do is very, very impressive. Last 10 games, obviously 375. But if you delve deeper into that, what he's done after the All-Star break, how he continues to lead National League rookies, not only in home runs, but RBIs and slugging percentage, that he goes to that plate with a lot of confidence in his mind that I've got a bat in my hand and good things are going to happen, and it usually does. And the reputation around the league is when he has a bat in his hand, you don't want to throw anything <laughs> right in the middle of the plate because it could, could go very, very far. We are set for baseball. Glad you're along as always. The Rockies and Diamondbacks come on back to Coors Field with us. Brought to you by your neighborhood Toyota stores. Toyota moving forward by CenturyLink. Fast speed and a low monthly price. Visit CenturyLink.com. And by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at Southwest.com. Well, the first pitch tonight will not be thrown by Jolie Chassin. It will be thrown by that young lady who is a rather accomplished swimmer from what we understand. That's right, Missy Franklin in the house tonight. She got tutored by Matt Belial the other day at Regis High School. And Matt's a good teacher. And Missy Franklin's going to join us upstairs uh, in the second inning. We're looking forward to that. Meanwhile, Adam Eaton will lead things off for the Arizona Diamondbacks. He had a home run last night, his second career home run. In fact, his first career home run came 48 hours ago. Aaron Hill, who has 23 bombs, he'll bat second. Justin Upton's got an eight-game hitting streak. Miguel Montero next. He had a big night last night. Paul Goldschmidt, Jason Kubel, who did not play yesterday. Chris Johnson, John McDonald, and the left-hander Patrick Corbin. It was the batting order this evening for Arizona, and a little bit more on Mr. Shasin. I just look at the bottom number, 237 ERA in a six start since returning from the DEL. He's had success in his career against Arizona, including here at Coors Field in his five outings. He's one and one, ERA just above three, but he knows how to pitch to these guys, and there's familiarity on both sides, but if Yolise goes out and pounds the strike zone with his fastball, both sides of the plate to get to the sliders and the changeups ahead in the count, he'll pile up some strikeouts.
So Julis is ready to go and the fastball outside ball one. Sean seen against the Giants five innings allowed a run on five hits. A couple of strikeouts just one walk. And that pitch misses two and up. Chris Caccioni behind home plate. Native of Salida Colorado. Now lives down here in the Denver metro area at first base. Jeff Nelson, Bill Welke at second, Corey Blazer at third. This is one of the young umpires on the rise. Every time reports come out about him, he's, he ranks up there at the, one of the top. Yeah, he is very well thought of. Here's the 2 1. And that's strike two. It's so good, Huey, to see Shasin out there and knowing that he's healthy. That's the key for everybody, but more importantly for him. To know that when he goes out there, that that side and the arm and everything involved is okay. And speaking of that, we, we never touched on it last night, but Jorge De La Rosa, talking to Keith Duggar yesterday, he said he came out of that start in San Francisco, el elbow was great. The rest of the body was a little sore just from being out on a major league field, but the arm checked out good. This ball to deep left center field by Eaton, and it hits the top of the wall out of bounds. Eaton can run, and he's head to third. He'll have a triple easily. So Adam Eaton, who has really made an impression on Kevin Towers and Kirk Gibson since arriving in the big leagues. A leadoff triple. Well, he's reached base 14 out of the 15 games that he has played in. The leadoff triple down and away from him. He slices it to the big, big gap in left center field. And he's off to the races and he cuts the bags perfectly inside corner. Stride. They've been searching for a leadoff hitter and I think they found one. Aaron Hill. And he fouls it off. He told me today that when he was growing up, his dad, his dad's about 5'10", mom's about 5'5". Five, five. He said, listen, you're not going to be real big. He said, so you better learn how to get your uniform dirty. <laughs> Good advice. Yeah. He took that to heart, and he has a great work ethic. So he used to give him great pride and satisfaction in the winter to be doing something baseball-related. This will get the run home. Long throw, Rutledge. And staying on the bag at first was Pacheco. Good job. So it's one nothing Arizona, but he grew up in a northern community. He said, I know nobody else was probably doing anything baseball related, and I'd be out there uh, getting something done to make me better. And that's why all the guys that weren't doing it, they're watching him on TV now. He, 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 shoulda, coulda, woulda, or my coach didn't like me or something like that. Well, this kid was out working. He'd go out in boots in the snow. And he had a little, uh, you know, you know semi-circle kind of cage set up, and he hit balls into that off the tee in the winter. And you're absolutely right. That's why he's here, and some of the, some of the guys he uh, played with and against are watching him. And those guys might have had more talent than Adam, but he, he just outworked them. Think about this now: the Diamondbacks with a first inning run. They have scored in nine of the ten innings in this series already. And yesterday in the second inning is Upton. He's behind 0-2. They had the bases loaded, did not score. They're the first team to score in all eight innings of a game this year. Well, it was the first time for them in franchise history that they had done that. Two strike count on up, then he'll back out. The last time it happened where a team scored an eight of nine innings, the Dodgers in 2010 in Cincinnati. So it's been a couple years since any team in the major leagues had scored an eight of nine frames, and they came, as I said, very, very close to scoring in all nine, which the Rockies did. Few years back in Chicago. Chicago.
Upton riding an eight-game hitting streak. Here's the one-two, and he's got a nine-game hitting streak. Pass to diving Pacheco, and Justin picking up the speed. Colvin's throw is not going to get him. And that is why he has a nine-game hitting streak. Taking a fastball that is away and right on the black of the plate and hitting it past first base. I mean, the ball's going to be right out there. And he slices it past the diving Pacheco. If this gets by Tyler Colvin, that's a triple or maybe an inside the park home run. If it gets in that corner and wraps around. Yeah, he did a good job with the power slide to keep it in front of him. Miguel Montero hitting an even 400 against the Rockies this year. Three home runs, 12 RBIs. Last night he drove in three. He's got 88 on the season. Still using the same bat he used last night, the one that's chipped up at the end. I forgot to ask him about that. He didn't have that during batting practice. That's not the one he was using. This is his uh, 20th. Ooh, that clipped Matt Williams, I think. Maddie's been hit harder than that, though. Was it during spring yeah, training? Look, look, yeah, yeah, yeah go hit with, it that yeah, way. Get it okay. between <laughs> the lines, all right? He said, yeah. Get the bat head out. Let's see if it gets him. Remember the first week or two of the season, Matt couldn't coach third base because he had a walking boot on. So he had broken his foot. Down the line, look out. Oh. Brown he is okay. And Montero with a one and two count. Yeah, I remember when Matt Williams started the year uh, on the coach's DL. Right at the last moment, he slowed down, but still from the Mike Shaw Subaru Super Mode, the impact of going into that padded wall. You can see three different things that could be injured. Wrist, shoulder, knee. Carlos Gonzalez has run into the wall a few times himself. He won't tonight. He, he won't for the next couple of days. Nursing that uh, hamstring injury. Here's the one-two and popped up. Right around the mound, Chris Nelson may have to climb the mound. So I'm going back to my old athlete thing. You know what? That's it. Jolie Chassin didn't have to move. Let the pitcher catch it. Not on that one. No, I, I know what you're saying. Not on that one. It was Just too high. Too high? All right. <laughs> Here's the uh, Rockies defense. Brown, Fowler, Colvin, Nelson, Rutledge, LeMahieu, and Pacheco with Rosario doing the catching. Two outs. Paul Goldschmidt at the plate. Goldsmith with 41 doubles. This one line toward right center field, and he's probably going to have another double. Drives in a run with double number 42. Upton comes around, and it's two to nothing Arizona. Triple, double, double here in the first frame against Shasin. And when Goldsmith first came up to the big leagues, his power was to right center field. Had an inside out swing. He would wear out the right center field gap he's learned how to pull the ball like last night he pulled the double to left center tonight he goes back to his familiar swing and hits it over to head of Tyler Colvin Arizona leading the league in double six more than the Reds nine more than the Rockies and this is a base hit the center field from Kubel and it's three to nothing I thought we pushed the lead on last night's ball game. Can we go back 10 minutes to the first pitch? And start over. He can't do that. Shasin would like to. Yeah. That's RBI number 87 for Kubel. And again, Jolie's had not allowed more than a run in a game except for one time since his return. Yeah, and Kubel snaps an 0 for 23 slide. This is a broken bat sliver going out towards the mound. 
I generally think it, that you snap those long offers in two ways. Either guy goes deep like the Grand Slam Rutledge hit a few or, days back, or, or you get a broken like bat. Blue right field. Colvin will make the catch. And Arizona's off and running again. They nearly hit for the cycle in the first inning. They're up 3-0. Lost 15 to 5. That Dexter Fowler will lead things off for the Rockies. He'll be followed in Jim Tracy's lineup presented by Southwest Airlines by Josh Rutledge, Jordan Pacheco, Willene Rosario. Chris Nelson had a good night again last night offensively. Andrew Brown, Tyler Colvin, DJ LeMahieu, and Shasin. Dexter yesterday was 1 for 5. And Patrick Corbett's on the hill. He pitched at Coors Field back in May. Things did not go so well for him in He's May against the Rockets. Yeah, he was matched up against Jamie Moyer in that start back in May. His last outing against San Francisco, he, he jumped over a hurdle that he had. He went eight innings, just 93 pitches to get through those eight innings, a couple earned runs. He came over along with Tyler Skaggs and Joe Saunders in the Dan Heron trade from Anaheim. He was very impressive during spring training. We saw him one uh, night in March. Huey and he had a string of these types of starts where he was dominant. We saw him dominant against the Rockies. Yeah, and there was talk that he could break camp with them and be one of their five starters. He was pitching that well. Got a quick arm. One ball, one strike on Dexter. Coming off a good performance. He beat the Giants his last time out, 10 to 2 final. Snapped a four game winless streak for him. Dexter hits this one foul down the right field line. Really similar to the guy the Rockies saw last night, Wade Miley. Miley had the curveball. Corbin goes with the fastball slider change. Arizona will go with this outfield Jason Kubel, Adam Eaton, and Justin Upton. Kubel's had a very good year defensively. Chris Johnson, John McDonald on the left side, Aaron Hill, Paul Goldschmidt on the right side. And Miguel Montero is doing the catching for the 20th straight ball game. He's a machine back there. He's made himself a really good receiver. And you know the damage he does offensively. Well, the previous record for catchers was 11 consecutive games. So he's just blown past that. Dexter fouls off another pitch. Rockies trying to snap a seven-game losing streak. 
Let's remind people that if the Rockies score seven or more during any game, go to participating Colorado Taco Bell locations the next day between four and six and get your Rockies taco special. Dexter doing his thing. Fallon pitches off. Next time you look up, it's a full count. That's what you're looking for from the leadoff hitter. The other thing is to get on base. Dexter has done that this year. The on base percentage now of 391, which is outstanding. In fact, it's fifth in the National League. That is how outstanding it is. Couple MVP candidates leading the way. Buster Posey and Andrew McCutcheon. McCutcheon's going to have a chance for the the batting title now. He will because Melky Cabrera rightfully removed himself from consideration. He's suspended. Center field, Eaton glides over, makes the catch, one out. Josh Rutledge coming up, and let's go back to May when Corbin was on the field here at uh, 20th and Blake. Six innings, he gave up six runs on nine hits against the Rockies. Hit the ball all, all over the ballpark against Corbin, right field, left field, dead center field. He was masked up with Jamie in that start. It was 26 years and 243 days difference in age. Well, he just accomplished something he didn't accomplish in that first meeting. He got Dexter Fowler out. <laughs> Dexter was three for three against him back in May. Rutledge wasn't with the Rockies back in May. He's with the Tulsa Drillers. Here's the 1-1 one -one on Josh. One and two. We mentioned the seven game losing streak for the Rockies. That's not their longest losing streak of the year. I wish I could stand here and tell you it was. They lost eight games consecutively back in June. Top to short, John McDonald. Out of East Lime, Connecticut, makes the play. Two outs. Coming up a little bit later on in the evening, Toyota Talk. Text Toyota followed by a space and then your comments, questions, 720-720. Text now. You'll be entered to win a one-year family membership to the Denver Zoo. So here's Pacheco. Jordan was two for three with a ribby against Corbett. Fastball at 93 misses. And that's where Corbin sits. It's between 91 and 93. Will touch 94 miles an hour, but it's straight. It's a four seamer. Doesn't cut it inside like we saw from Wade Miley last night. He'll locate more inside, but it's not cut. Swing. The time you turn around, you're looking at Jordan Pacheco and a, a hit streak. He's had 11, 8, 6, another four game. Toward the hole, McDonald uh, gloves it. That's about it. And the 38 year old will. Pick himself up, and Pacheco has an infield hit. Oh, a five-game hit streak. And that's why you hit over 300. It's about placement for Jordan. He placed it in the 5-6 hole in between short and third. John McDonald, even if he doesn't go to the ground, he's not going to be able to throw out Jordan.
So here's Willeen. Chance to get the Rockies back in there, and he's going to have himself a seeing on the base hit. Going first to third is Pacheco. Well, back to back three hit days. And he's going to right field more and more lately. Well, and that's what he's done in the last two games. He's had three hits in each of those games. It's about half the hits have been to right field. This one he got lucky because he pulled off the front side opened up. He's thinking pull and it wasn't until it went off the end of the bat. In a good position. Did he realize he had a base hit? Chris Nelson has also been swinging the bat well. And Nelly lines us into the seats foul. Chris had a couple of hits yesterday. He's hitting 11 of his last 13 ball games. He's got the average to 296. In fact, if you go back to the All Star break, from that point forward, there's only one third baseman in the game that has a higher batting average. And that fella may win. The most valuable player award in the American League. Miguel Cabrera okay. battling Mike and maybe, Trout. And maybe a triple crown. It may be a triple crown. But uh, Cabrera, the highest batting average among any starting third baseman since the All-Star break. Nelson right behind him, which means he's led the National League among third basemen with his 345 clip in the second half. Corbin's ahead here, 0-2. And he got him on a slider in the dirt. Montero completes completes the play. There were a couple hits, couple men left. One inning of play complete. The Diamondbacks leading three to nothing. This evening up three to nothing as we go to the top of the second inning eight nine and one for Arizona Drew Goodman along with Jeff Houston and uh, we uh, beautify the booth a little bit Missy Franklin <laughs> joins us. How are you? I'm so great. Thank Good. you. Good. You are great. You are terrific and, and you energized the nation uh, just a little over a month ago. That was so much fun to watch and and I and I know I speak for everybody in Colorado and everybody's patting you on the back but it was really neat for us to say. Wait, she's our neighbor. <laughs> well, it was awesome to have so much support from you guys. It was so incredible. It meant the world to me. And just coming home with such a reception and just being able to finally be home in Colorado meant everything to me. And then I've been able to do so many awesome things like this. I so. thought it was neat watching the Olympics and then they would cut to the kids at, at Regis. Oh and my gosh, see how the, awesome was yeah, that? Yeah, and see the, the support that you had there yeah. with with classmates oh it was unbelievable night news was so awesome to put that on and i had so many classmates there and as soon as i saw that video i just 
the waterworks started coming, but just knowing, I had no idea that that was happening. So after my race, when I saw that video, just knowing that that whole race, I had them behind me, was just incredible. Have you had a Have you had a night yet where you've gotten truly eight hours of sleep? Because I know you're getting, I mean, you're getting pulled in a million different directions. I, we're in your, your neighborhood all the time. There's a great banner there that, that welcomes oh, people so at the sweet. pool to, yep. you know, the, the home of Missy Franklin, that sort of thing. And, and then, of course, as Jeff was mentioning with Regis, have you had any time to just kind of deprogram a little bit you know i definitely have my my friends and my family make sure i get my missy moments in and i actually was able to go to my first high school football game last night which was so much fun yeah. but i've definitely had my my moments to just be me have you even been back in the pool since then i have yeah we started two weeks ago i believe so did it feel weird to get back in the pool it after does. taking so much time Always. off? Because as, a, as an athlete, that's what you train for. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's so hard being a swimmer and being out of shape. It's honestly the worst feeling in the world. But we took five weeks off and got back in. And the first time you get in the water, you're just like, what is this? Like, <laughs> this is so weird. Uh, yeah, maybe for everybody else, but not for you. <laughs> that's good because we were a little concerned just being from Colorado that you were going to slack off. <laughs> We're buoyed to hear I, that. I, I <laughs> hope I'm not slacking out. I actually did my first spin class this morning. It was like the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, but it was so fun. So <laughs> I, I know swimmers, in all seriousness, I know swimmers obviously lift a lot, and you yeah. spend you know ridiculous amounts of time in the water. But do you cross train now as well? I mean, you mentioned the spinning class. Do you guys yeah. do a lot of other stuff as well? You know, I mainly do my strength and conditioning. I want to get involved in other types of exercise and I want to start doing yoga and spinning. I want to do that more because I had so much fun today. But it's fun to do different types of exercises. It keeps it, you know, exciting and it makes you want to go out and work out. John McDonald leans on one a little bit, deep left field, and Andrew Brown makes the catch. You know, I, I know you've probably been asked this question before, but was the Olympics everything that you thought it was going to be or more? It was so much more. So much more. We had so many meetings before we got there with the veterans and the rookies, and the veterans would tell us, you know, it's not going to be perfect. Like, you could miss a bus, and you could be 30 minutes late to warm up, and you could be really stressed out, or you may hate the food. Like, there's things that you don't think about that could go really wrong when you're at the biggest meet of your life. But everything was perfect. London did such a great job of putting that on, and I had the time of my life. You know, you know what was cool f for, for me, at least, watching, and, and I'm sure for a lot of people, the support... You know, swimming's a great venue, I yes. mean, and, and I think I wish we saw more of it in the in the, in the years that are non-Olympic years because mm -hmm. you guys are wonderful athletes, and it's it's kind of old-fashioned competition. It's like it's like a track. You know, you, it, who's faster, me or you? are going to run 100 <laughs> meters. Go. Well, it's, well, your thing is you know, especially on backstroke. All right, 100 meters. We're going to and who yeah. see who's faster. Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, all these iconic athletic figures, and they're there. How neat was that? It was so cool. I remember seeing that video, too, after I swam. I mean, you don't know any of this is happening while you're swimming. You're just swimming away. But you get out, and you realize, like, everything that was happening while you were swimming. And I saw the video of them there and of Kate and William there, and it was just like, did you really get to happy? meet any of all of those <laughs> folks? I mean, I did actually. Point? The basketball team, the men's basketball team, wasn't staying in the village, but they came in to say hi to everyone, which was so awesome. So they came in and stopped by and said hi, and then they all went to McDonald's. So, <laughs> <laughs> when you're in the pool, can you hear the crowd? Yes, you can. You Not can under the water. You and... can. You can feel them and you can hear them. It's kind of a combination of both, but. There would be such a huge difference between swimming if there was no crowd and swimming if there was a crowd. Now, when you're going and you're swimming and you're going for gold and, and all that, do you know while it's happening that you're swimming well that day? You know, I think you can't really be thinking during the race, am I doing good, am I doing bad? You just have to focus on what you're doing in that moment and try and get your hand on that wall. So sometimes, sometimes it's hard when you have warm-up and you get in and you're just like, Oh, like I don't feel nearly as good as I did yesterday. And you didn't have much time between two of your races. Yeah, two hundred free semis. Eighteen semis. minutes, fourteen minutes. Yeah. Or was it? it was something ridiculous. It was like fourteen minutes. <laughs> it was so fun. But after the oh first gosh, one, though, you went it. and got in the pool to stay loose. Yes. Before your next one. Yes. So you always warm down after your races, but because the warm down pool is about like a six-minute walk from the competition pool, I didn't have time to go all the way there swim down for like 100 and then come back. So Fina was awesome, and they let me swim down in the dive well. So I literally just hopped out of my race, hopped in the dive well, swam, got out, and went right back into the ready room. <laughs>
Uh, that that is amazing. I, that's neat. Uh, Jeff asked a great question because I didn't. You think okay, you're, you're underwater, or at least most of you is underwater, and you can hear the crowd. That is yeah, that's always. wild. Yep. Was it like that in Omaha as well? I mean, yes. can you hear the crowd in Omaha? Oh my gosh, yeah, Omaha is such a great. W was venue. that in some way, even though, you know, you were heavily favored in, in a number of events, but was that still nerve wracking, knowing okay, I got to get it done this week in Omaha. Yeah, you know, it it feels like it would be and there were moments like that, but I knew it was going to be like that going in. So I think because I anticipated it and sort of thought of a way to handle it, it wasn't nearly as bad for me because I knew that I just wanted to go in there and have fun and I'd done everything I possibly could. So all I had to do was swim. Well, and, and your mom's right behind us. She's not on camera. <laughs> but your parents, every time you, you, you cut to them in the stands, that, that was, I mean, from a parent's perspective, that was neat to see the support yeah. that you had from your mom and dad. It's unbelievable. I mean, they told me, I mean, when, 2008, when I was 13, at trials like just have fun like we're so <laughs> proud of you for being here and 2012 it was exactly the same thing we're so proud of you just have fun like, that's honestly all they want me to do adam eaton walks i know you wanted me to mention that missy it uh, <laughs> but I was, you know you i, I keep I, track of the <laughs> game what's going on up here We've done this before. Yeah. <laughs> uh, You're professional. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I was reading your resume, and you played every sport under the sun. I mean, soccer. I think I saw gymnastics. Yeah. Uh, I mean, everything. I think you rodeo as well. <laughs> yeah, um, definitely. At what point in time, all of those before you started swimming, at what point in time, once you got in the pool, did you realize, wait a second, I'm pretty good at this. I mean, not, I'm not suggesting you weren't good at the other <laughs> endeavors. You probably were. But it, how quickly did you realize, I'm pretty unique? You know, I think if I was too busy having fun with it, that I wasn't really paying attention to my times or what place I was getting in meets. I just knew that I loved it. I always had ever since I was a child. And so when I think the three sports it came down to was basketball, soccer, and swimming. And I couldn't do two out of the three because it was, all of them are so time consuming. And once I hit that moment, I just knew it was going to be swimming because I, I, I knew I would always love it no matter what happened. 2016. I Rio. hope so. I hope so. Cross your fingers. <laughs> but I had so much fun this year. I would give anything to go back. It was amazing, and it gives you so much motivation to get back there because I had so much fun. What's the, it, 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 and forgive my ignorance, but the Olympics, that's what we focus on in so many sports. Yeah. When is the next big meet for you as a as a you know, an international competitor. Okay, so it's really nice because I'm actually not going out of the country at all this fall. So it'll be really nice just to stay in the country for a little Catch while. Catch a few more football games. <laughs> exactly, right. exactly. But my next big meet will be World Championships, and that's in Barcelona this summer. That sounds like a big so. meet. The World Champion. It yeah. sounds like a meet you want to be at. And when you say Barcelona. Yeah, yeah. I was like, Great okay. city. Yeah. Great city. Gorgeous. One of my favorites. Yeah. I absolutely love it there. That, and, and to be able to travel around the world as a, as a young lady... As an athlete, I mean, and, and meet people from all over the world. I'm sure a lot of the experience with the Olympics and, and being an international athlete is not just the camaraderie you have with the U.S. team, but also meeting young people from all over the world. Absolutely. And I have been given the most incredible opportunities. I have been to so many awesome places that I really hope I can go back to some days. But being able to travel when I'm so young and get these experiences and meet people from all over the world that I can talk to. And there was actually a 15-year-old backstroker, I believe, from the the Netherlands I want to say I'm not sure but I met her when I was in London and she is the sweetest girl like we keep in touch now and there's so many great friendships that can be formed just Speaking from sports your friendships you still stay in contact with the people oh, that yeah. you ran the, uh, <laughs> swam the relays not ran the relay but you know your teammates there in London oh absolutely the US team we are so close this summer and we all miss each other so much because I mean you spend 24 7 with these people for I mean almost like a month month and a half and so being apart from each other the day after when you're all flying home you're just like oh my gosh so what was more nerve-wracking the olympics or throwing out the first pitch oh gosh was, <laughs> I, I was pretty nervous i'm not gonna lie i'm so but happy you had help. i did i did tell us about that oh my gosh okay so matt came to regis matt belisle few, yes matt belisle he came to regis a few weeks ago and it turned out to be raining outside so we oh, I, went I, I, did, oh, excuse right me. I didn't know that you shook you shook him off that was good <laughs> that was nice go ahead i'm sorry i didn't yeah, interrupt I, that was no funny. i was you know i kind of wanted a different you know sign right, there you so didn't we, like that one mm -mm, no 
Um, <laughs> Matt taught me all that too. But he came to the school and we had so Let's much fun. Right here. He's a great guy. Oh I mean, my this is called coming set. You know, See, it looked do. exactly the same as when I did it. That's right? what I thought. I thought the ball, you know what? I, I, I thought you went to the breaking man. ball, and I, and I thought that was well, great. It had terrific. It, it fell off the table. It did. <laughs> Very, very uh, nicely done. We also done. had Walt you. Weiss to catch you at Regis. I did. Not a bad catcher. Wow. <laughs> but no, they came out and helped me so much. Matt is genuinely one of the nicest guys I've ever met. So it's been amazing to get to know him and Walt and the rest of the team. And I understand, as Justin Upton's now to play two outs, two on, I, I understand that you were going to use this platform to make the announcement that you're going to attend Ithaca College, my alma mater, <laughs> and swim for them. Which, I, you know, no, is catching a lot of people that, by am surprise. Am I supposed to say that? Was no, that? that's not on the that's, list. That was right here on this that's, script. Yeah. Right. <laughs> do, you, do you have any more trips left? I do. I actually, I've only taken one. I went to Cal Berkeley in August. Okay. So it's been kind of hard because I've had an entire month off of college visits. So I got so excited. And then there was just like a bunch of downtime, but I'm taking three in October. Georgia is the first weekend, Texas is the second weekend, and USC is the third weekend, so. All the schools who recruited Huey to no, play baseball. Yeah, right, I wish. <laughs> I wasn't as good as athlete as she is. <laughs> that's neat, though, that you have those choices. Oh, my gosh, I'm so blessed. And, yeah. and that's part of what you've said since the Olympics is, I mean, you had a chance to turn pro, and, but you wanted to go enjoy the college experience. Absolutely. I've seen how amazing it is. I've seen how close the team gets and what amazing friendships can be formed through college sports, and I, I want to be a part of it. Good for you. Nice. Good for you. That's It's refreshing. <laughs> yeah, I, I got you. I got the biggest kick out of watching you uh, late at night close the uh, NBC's coverage with <laughs> Costas that night. I mean, it's hard to upstage Bob because he is he's the best at what he does. And, and you know what? You stole the show that night. Oh, well, thank you. you that's, did. It's an honor. I don't, I mean, I don't even think that's possible to upstage Bob Costas. He's absolutely incredible. But has, has SNL called yet? They, they have not. I would be I totally you, up for it, though. I think that'd be fun. Uh, you'd be host. great. I think you'd be awesome. Do you think so? I think really? you're awesome. Maybe. You're a little camera shy, but is they it? can really <laughs> work with you on that. I mean, you'll be okay. Open me up to yeah, it right, eventually. Exactly. <laughs> Get you out of your shell. <laughs> <laughs> no, how are we doing? Well, we doing? Uh, well the this, first inning wasn't good. The first inning was wasn't good, and hopefully Shasin can work out of this. And see, the moment you say that, he's going to get a fly ball to center field. I know there's a lot of people to see, and you want to enjoy the game. Missy, it's, it's our distinct Aww. pleasure. Congratulations yes. Thank again. Thank you so much. And, I really uh, appreciate thank, it. Come by and visit again. Of course. I would love to. Thank you so much for having me, you guys. Good luck awesome. with school. Thank you. Good luck with uh, the World Championship. Thank you. All right. Missy Franklin. <laughs>
bat in the bottom of the second inning and they'll have Andrew Brown Tyler Colvin and DJ LeMayhew. What a treat. What a what a wonderful wonderful so young humble. lady. I'm, I mean vivacious humble talented. Her, fo her folks for forget that she's one of the great swimmers of the world. Her folks have done a, They've a raised her tremendous right. job raising just a, a, a wonderful young lady. That was neat. That was a lot of fun. Andrew Brown fouls it off. Andrew getting some reps in the outfield with the hamstring injury to Carlos Gonzalez. Last night he had a sack fly 0 for 3, but the day before got the start and was 1 for 3, a double. Also lined out to left, so he's well, that starting, helps too. starting to put some at bats together. The last three. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Take a good look at that one. You will not see it for long. Andrew Brown is hitting up on the concourse. Wow. That thing may have left the building. On the concourse, over the wall and left field, over the top of the Health Burger Shack in between the two Toyota signs. Well, the Nebraska product hit this thing halfway to Lincoln. <laughs> Oh, nothing like a flat slider. A cement mixer that just goes up there, doesn't spin. It comes in like a BP fastball. Where did that hit? One hop up on the roof into the parking lot. Somebody's going to check their car after the game for dents. Well, you, it may have landed in Andrew's car. <laughs> that was crushed. Three to one. There's a car alarm when it got on. One ball, one strike on Tyler Colvin. Well, that's that, a player's that was, lot, too. That was rem yeah, that was reminiscent of the ball Stanton hit. That took one hop and landed in the player's parking lot. See what he's not now? Some, somebody somebody just him, had yeah, to get did it you hit it good? <laughs> did you get it all? Yeah, pretty yeah I good. got it. Those are the ones that you don't feel when you hit them. You clip them so clean that it's it's like you hit nothing at all. That was belted. One out, DJ LeMayhew coming up. Well, the other thing, you don't have to run hard out of the box because you know it's a home run. Yeah, that, that one you can flip the bat. Nobody will get mad nope. at you. Who had the old line? I think it was maybe been a pitcher. He said if you hit it that far, you can stare at it. That's right. That's all the pitcher can do. Too. He just stare at it and watch it. Give him up that far. Might be a little proud of it, aren't you? What's better than the wall scraper? The one that just goes into the first row. If you're sitting out there in those left field seats, and those are great seats, man. That, it's such a great vantage point. And you're looking up and the ball sailing over your head, you know the ball was hit well. well. Or you're standing in line at the Helton Burger Shack and there's people are saying, look <laughs> out, watch incoming. It. This ball's pretty well hit the center field by LeMayhew. And this one's off the base of the wall. Eaton's going to need help from Kubel in left field. DJ LeMayhew with a triple. That's his second triple of the year. And he is showing increased power. A higher leg kick, getting the hands down through the baseball better, using his whole body and especially his lower half. He's been so much with the upper half that he was drifting off the back leg. Now he's getting the drive off of it that you want to see. The leg kick foot gets down, and he can still even do a little bit more. That foot could turn just a, a little bit more to generate even more power. But better than it was the first time he was up. Just missed the home run by a foot, foot and a half.
Infield in. With Chassin at the plate and one out. Now Jolies can handle the bat. This is far from one of those pitchers who's an automatic out. Well, five for 18. A couple of ribbies. Computes to a 278 average, and he's got himself another RBI and a base hit up the middle. On cue, Chassin makes it a one run game. But Alps is a hitter when the infield is playing in so many more holes. The infielder's range is limited. And he just put this ball in a good position. Because if Aaron Hill's back, he makes that play. The run would still score, but it would, if he was playing back in his normal position, that's a four to three. And that's pushing a bunt. Beautifully done, and he's safe at first. Of his last three bunt base hits have all come by pushing it towards first base. He seems to be more comfortable doing that, and you know what I like about it? I mean, De we know how bright Dexter is. There's thought process behind it. This is a perfect time. You got a pitcher's now on the ropes a little bit. Here comes Fowler. Boom, put it down right there. There's already traffic on base. I loved that decision. And there's only one out. And so he pushes it because of Corbin or where he is. He's falling off to the third base side. There was hesitation with Paul Goldschmidt. He picks it up. But Dexter Fowler is going to beat Aaron Hill to the back. You've given up a home run this inning. You've given up a triple, a base hit to the pitcher. The next guy lays a bunt down. That pitcher, and a young pitcher at that, his head spinning. His head spinning. 23-year-old Patrick Corbin now facing Josh Rutledge. And Rutledge out front on the off-speed pitch. Rutledge bounced to short his first time up. Tying run and Chassin at second. Go ahead run and Dexter at first. Two strike count. Ground ball hard to third. There's one on the first. Not going to double up. Rutledge. Well, it's a double clutch at third base from Chris Johnson. Not getting it to Aaron Hill in time. And maybe because it was hit so hard that he had to wait for Aaron Hill to get to the bat. But the double clutch, he comes up, he fields it, but doesn't throw it right away. There's the one extra hop. And that messed up the footwork of the second baseman. Dexter Fowler with his speed is on top of Hill. Dexter does a really good job of breaking up two typically. He has the long legs and. And he'll use his head too. We saw that in San Francisco. Yeah, not, not intentionally. <laughs> that was a good one. He was lucky there. Patrick Corbin from Clay, New York, the suburb of Syracuse, New York. So I'm sure he was outside all winter long throwing, too. Real close to Ithaca. About an hour north. Check over the 1 1 count. Two balls and a strike.
Shasin at third, Rutledge at first. Two runs in in the inning. No swing, says Jeff Nelson. Looked like the right call, three and one. Sometimes when you hesitate like that, Jeff, you feel you're, you're I don't want to say upset with yourself, but you're like, you didn't, you didn't like your actions, even though it did cost you a strike. But the approach wasn't right. And that's what you're shaking your head at, is stay back, keep the hands back. Don't let them drift with you. Down the line, fair ball, tie ball game. Now Rutledge around third, he's going to get a green light. Here comes the throw toward the plate, no throw. And now Pacheco, assuming there was going to be a throw, is tagged out. And Jeff Nelson, I think it was Jeff and Nelson. Bill Wilkie. Is it Bill Wilkie? He got involved, literally made the call, then got upended. That was a wild finish to a four-run second inning for the Rockies. A two-run double for Pacheco, and he's given the Rockies the lead. Andrew Brown got it started with a home run that may not have landed yet. 4-3 Colorado. Still uh, writing in crayon in my book to uh, get all the markings down. A four-run inning to take a four-to-three lead. Well, the stars are all out at Coors Field tonight. You see those folks there, and uh, we had Missy Franklin earlier, and now Joe Scott, the head coach of the University of Denver. Well, I don't know about the stars part there, Drew, but I know it's true for her. Uh, that's definitely true. So, uh, like I said, bringing in the second team now, but. You know what? It's if good you're to be with you guys. Yeah. to be upstaged by somebody, you have no problem. Being somebody upstaged that by just won a lot of Olympic medals. That's true. Medals. I like following uh, champions, uh, four gold medals, uh, and she does it with class. So uh, she, unbelievable. She's, I know she's, you got to visit something. with her a little bit in the hallway. Yep. She's something. So uh, you know, and I think she's just going to keep doing. She's going to keep doing well. I know that going forward. I, I know you always worry naturally as a coach about about your athletes and injuries, and we have one of your kids who's, who's been interning for us, and he's a wonderful kid, by the way. Um, and, and he's had a, at different times had a, a boot on his foot. The great thing about swimmers, typically they don't get injured. Well, I mean, I, I, there's something about it. When our guys get injured, they put them in the pool. <laughs> but I don't know if it's the water or or just uh, you know the the pound lack of pounding on the body. I right. know that that's for certain. I mean, probably all of us. Uh, it's time for yeah. us to get in the pool instead of keep pounding the legs. Hey, you but. don't need to remind us. <laughs> exactly. Well, you had 22 wins last year. You have four starters back, yep. and you only have yes. one senior at Chase Howell. Yep, we're uh, we're fortunate. We're in a real good spot. Uh, we have very good young players. You know, obviously, uh, getting Chase back healthy is, is going to be important because to have a, you know, a solid senior with all these good younger players, uh, 
you know, we, we were primed to have another really good year, but I, I think the future beyond that, you know, Udofi is only a junior, Olsen and O'Neill are sophomores. Uh, we, we, we have some really good players, and uh, we're looking forward to building off of last year's really good year. A tremendous year. As Jeff mentioned, 22 victories. You, you beat some RPI top 30 teams in the process, Southern Miss being one. One of the things that I like that you've done, Joe, is that you've taken the Princeton offense, which you've won a lot of games in different places with, and um, I don't know if it's the right term to say put it on steroids when we're at a, a baseball game, but right. <laughs> but you've accelerated that offense at times. You're still a very highly efficient offensive basketball team. Miguel Montero not happy. But you're able, you score the basketball with, with greater frequency than I think when people yes. say, oh, Princeton offense, they're playing 35, 32 games. Well, we, what we did, we made a conscious decision uh, after year four uh, going into last year that, you know, we were going to make some changes. Uh, I thought with Olsen and O'Neill coming in with Udofia getting to be a sophomore, I didn't know if it was going to work as well as it did right. last year, but I knew those were the kinds of guys that we could do what you're talking about. And we were, we were very good at getting easier baskets, getting out in transition, uh, getting some open threes in transition. And really what it did was it just made our half-court offense even that more productive. When, when we didn't get those easy baskets, we had the other team back on their heels. And uh, we're going to keep doing that because we got some really good young players. They're talented. They can do a lot of different things. They're, they're very... Uh, multi-faceted players. I mean, we're we're six five, six five, six five, six five. So Adolfi is one of those guys yeah. that I, I enjoy watching play because he's so athletic. There's so many things he can do with the basketball and create his own opportunities. Well, he's just uh, he, he's one of those guys. Define his game. You know, I don't. His game is produce. Right. His game is block shots, uh, get dunks, and then last year, what I really. Again, didn't know it was going to come that fast, but ju just the rise and sort of his his fundamentals, his, his basketball IQ. He's always been extremely athletic, uh, but his basketball IQ and his fundamental skills are just sort of catching up. And he's he's really uh, I don't know how good he can be. I mean, he's got unique uh, timing, blocking shots. So uh, you know, we're just fortunate to have him. You know, and the other good thing, like you said about Blake, who interned with you. Uh, Chris, Chris is just a phenomenal kid. I mean, he's an unbelievable kid. Uh, so humble. I mean, yeah. I don't even think he knows how good he is. <laughs> right. he just, yeah. He's just a normal kid. He's he's playing college basketball. And he's enjoying it, and and I think that rubs off on our team. I think that's how we're approaching it, and uh, it, it it makes it so our guys are enjoying playing, and I think uh, that's going to make us continue to win games this year. I'm starting to get more exposure too. Uh, big time. I mean, first with you guys, this is great. Uh, we, we got seven ga games on with you. We love that partnership. Uh, we got Cal coming coming this year. Last year we had St. Mary's. Uh, we have a very good schedule with Utah State, New Mexico State, uh, when you guys are covering us. And then this year, you know, we, we have a, a minimum of four ESPN appearances, so That's possibly awesome. a fifth. So to your point, again, it's just good players, good players getting better, winning games. And uh, you do that, you know what? Uh, people, you know, follow you, start to follow you. And, Hopefully we're going to capitalize on that this year. And a couple of notes on that. And, and Magnus Arena is a great gymnasium. It's not a gymnasium, so it's an arena, but it's a great place to watch a basketball game. And not only that, it's right in town. I mean, it's right in town. It's really in the, in the middle of the city. So you can see high caliber, major college basketball right around the corner. And the other neat part about it is that you've done a good job at State. And yeah. Huey's kids have gone to Chaparral, and Chaparral yeah, won, this, won yeah, the, yeah. The, the state title in one of the great, forget high school, one of the great I basketball know. games I've ever seen. Yep. That tip in against Arapaho in overtime. Exactly. Phenomenal kids on display. There's some good kids in the state. You took a couple out of, out of uh, Highlands Ranch last year. Well, you know, I think one of our advantages, if we can continue to, uh, you know, develop and become the stable program that we are, is the state, maybe it doesn't produce high majors every year. But it produces good mid-major basketball players. And to your point, right here in Denver, great city. I mean, I jumped in my car and drove down here to the game in 10 minutes, 15 minutes. You get to our arena in 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Uh, and if we can go out there and play with Udofias and O'Neills and Olsons and, and local guys, you know, Marcus Bird, I mean, I think that can really make the local community follow us uh, just as much. Great basketball with some local flavor uh, is pretty good with 
good opponents coming into our building. You know, the WAC's going to be good for us this year. It's going to be a battle, but I think the best part is, is we're ready to compete in the WAC. We're ready. We beat Utah State at Utah State last year. Tough to do. Sue so, Warrell's always had a great uh, program. He's a phenomenal coach. So uh, it's not like we're going into a league and we're going to have to adjust. To, we're going to have to adjust, but we know who we are, and we know we're going in that league to compete uh, to win the league title. This is what you do next time you face Stu Morrill's team at Utah State. You know how he always he holds up the, uh, the, the notebook with the next play? You hold up your own notebook. Know, exactly. He holds up a play, you hold up a defensive play. I know. I don't know how they do that. But they do it really well. And I they're, do, they're going to iPads, by the way. Well, uh, yeah. the <laughs> Pretty soon they'll be like the quarterback. They'll have something in the kid's ear. They'll have something in the kid's ear coming down the court. Or uh, have it on the wristband. Or, or, so, exactly, yeah. exactly, like looking at your plays. So. But the, he does do that and uh, that the, the league in general, Utah State, New Mexico State, uh, Idaho is going to be very good. Uh, Louisiana Tech won 18 games last year. They have everybody back. So I really think the league uh, is a multiple bid league uh, this year, which is good for us because we have a really good team. It puts us in position where I think the WAC's going to have a pretty good profile nationally this year. So it's 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 a good year for Does us. Does it make to it more able. challenging for you though when you're scouting, uh, going up against these teams when you don't have that familiarity uh -huh. with them? I think it cuts both ways. I mean, they don't have that familiarity with us. Right. So obviously we don't have it with them. Uh, you know, in in a large to a large extent, we try to just concentrate on ourselves anyhow and be really good at what we do. Uh, I think. Lack of familiarity is going to hurt a little bit in terms of going to Las Cruces, never having been in that building. You know, going to Idaho, never having been in that building. You know, having been in the Sun Belt, we were used to those things. Our the players hotels, were used to the, the all that stuff. In the Exactly. Practice facilities. Exactly. Hey. So that's going to be an adjustment. Well, the, the kids that are upperclassmen, they have literally seen the country playing for uh, the University of Denver. Yeah, and I'm glad we're in the whack this year. I'm a little tired of seeing the country, but. Uh, the trips will be easier. They're easier. They're definitely easier. Uh, and I think it's good for, for us, again, for college basketball in, in the area in that we will be playing regional, you know, regionally recognized opponents, re regional opponents that people who are basketball fans know, hey, New Mexico State's good, Utah State's tomorrow, they're good. Well, they're coming into our building now. Well, I, so. I, I think, and you've heard me say this before, CU, CSU, Northern Colorado, DU, Air Force, New Mexico, Wyoming. Wyoming. Mexico, they ought to play every year, and I know, and I know it's easy for us to say because we're entertained by it. Those are all tough rivalry type of games, and you probably don't want to play a ton of those in the non-conference. I understand that from a coach's standpoint, but from from the, put my fan hat on, I mean, come on, that's that's really good stuff for us. I agree, and especially now, uh, to your point, you know, if, if you go back five years from when we got here, what the state of college basketball was to now, what the state of college basketball is now. With Colorado and Colorado State and us and uh, Larry, I mean, I think we had all four of those teams won 20 games last year, and all four of them are going to be good again this year. So uh, I think it says a lot about uh, the state of basketball, you know, in Colorado. And if somehow we can capitalize on that and play each other and, and make sure we maintain a little bit of, of and, de and maybe develop even a little bit more what you're talking about, it can keep basketball sort of college basketball in the forefront. Uh, you know, in the winter months, which, you know, it's it's a big deal, and we're getting to that point. I, I hope we can keep it going. Rutledge on the move. But you know what? He'd probably be a pretty good point guard. Two guard, what do you think? Well, you know, most shortstops, I think you can probably say that about, <laughs> about <laughs> most shortstops. Hey, Joe, it's always a pleasure. Right, great to great. see you. Good luck this year. Thanks. Thanks for having me on, guys. University of Denver, right, nice. outstanding men's basketball coach Joe Scott. Back in a moment, 4-3.
ahead, powered by your Colorado Hyundai dealers. Step up to the plate, get more miles per gallon with the hottest car line in America, Hyundai. The Diamondbacks are here through Monday, and then the Cubbies come to town. They'll be here Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday afternoon, and Thursday afternoon is the final home game of 2012. With the former Cub, Jeff Houston, I'm Drew Goodman. And by the way, save responsibly when you shop with your Colorado Hyundai dealers. Check it out at coloradohyundai.com. That's called the tagline, Huey. Almost failed to read it. <laughs> and you have to get those in. Good to see Sponsors. Joe Scott. I'm excited about the University of Denver. Seven ball games right here on Root Sports. Some some well, real good matchups. He's that program. That's a great way of describing it, Huey. He has because th this is not this is a mid major playing with with major college um, powers and and beating them. I mean, he's he's done a tremendous job, and there is a local flavor. There's Colorado kids on the University of Denver team, as we Got talked about. Two from kids from Island Branch, a kid from. from uh, Colorado Springs. He always seems to have a DPS kid. Uh -oh. This one is way back and gone. Raleen Rosario now owns the Colorado Rockies record for rookie home runs. He just passed the great Todd Elf. That is number 26. We talked about it in our open, talking about Willene Rosario and separating his offense and his defense. His offense is special. 26 home runs, and this one meant a lot to him. When he hits this, I mean, how about the hug from Benny Castillo? But when he hit this, he just dropped his bat down. This is a loud drive over the head of Upton by Chris Nelson. And Nelly is in safely with a double. You're absolutely right. Remember what Willene told us in San Francisco? He said, I'm gonna get one here and I'm gonna and I'm gonna get the record at home. That's it. And he'll get the baseball. That's a whole lot of big flies and not that many at bats. Now, the second half, Willene has played as a regular catcher. You remember the first part of the season until Ramon Hernandez got hurt. Ramon was was the number one catcher. Four to five days a week, and Willene was catching two or three. I mean, Rosario still, Huey, has less than 360 at bats. That's a lot of home runs. It is, and this is a home run swing. If you're going to watch one and you want to see how you drop the backside and lift and elevate and everything else you want to do, Willene Rosario does it. And through it all, he's kept a smile on his face and he's kept working hard. Well, I tell you what, not to be outdone, that ball Chris Nelson hit, he hit it so hard, Justin Upton misjudged it. He thought it was a line drive to him. Well, it was. It was just over his head. He got fooled. It was a line drive that kept on driving. <laughs> Andrew Brown hit a monstrosity of a home run his first time up. Both home runs hit tonight. They were, they would have gone out in any ballpark. Any ballpark. They, the, there's never, been, there's never been a park anybody's thought of making that would have held the ball that Brown hit. Grand Canyon National Park. That was it. Down the right field line, foul. Let's check out our Coors Light Cold Hard Blast. This is to the third power, this uh, Cold Hard Blast. Honestly, Huey, I didn't see this thing land. And then I, I saw a little hop and it headed toward the player's <laughs> parking lot. When people on the concourse are, 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 yeah. are getting whiplash, seeing where the ball's going. 
Two and two. Good pitch from Corbin. Ferguson. Brad Ferguson. 26 year old right handers getting loose in a hurry at the bullpen. Nice job. Andrew Brown got high fives going in the front door of the dugout. And he's going to get high fives going in the back door now of the dugout. Moving Chris Nelson to third. You go from a home run swing to a get him over swing with two strikes. CenturyLink high speed pitch. Patrick Corbin's touch 94. Jolice 93. Infield comes in with the Rockies ahead five to three. Tyler Colvin bounced to first in the second inning. Colvin sitting on 65 RBIs. It's been a great bounce back year for Tyler. We'll see his old friends with the Cubs, those that are left. Not many left. No, not really. When they come in on Tuesday. Not just in the players portion, it's in the front office, it's scouts, it's minor league coaches. Well, you Ouch. worked in that you worked in that organization as a as an instructor and a lot of the guys I know that you were yeah. with have moved on. There's seven or eight that they got the pink slip. Well, you can't say it was a surprise once the Cubs made the investment in Theo Epstein. Well, he's going to bring his own people in. He's going to implement his plans, his strategies. Bring guys in he's comfortable with. Good pitch by Corbin. And the throw in time to get. Colvin at first and now there's two outs the infield will drop back DJ LeMay who coming up Corbin may pass on him with Shasin on deck though Shasin already has an RBI hit today. See how Kirk Gibson handles this. For the best deals around buy a Coca-Cola value pack and get four tickets food parking and more starting at fifty nine dollars four tickets four hot dogs Cokes. Call 303 Rockies or go on at ColoradoRockies.com for the Coca Cola value pack. Well, they're going to uh, pitch to DJ LeMay, who tripled off the center field wall his first time up. And we'll see how long they pitch to him. If it gets to 2 0, do they walk him then? I just find that hard to do, though, with a young pitcher on the hill. You either pitch to him or you walk him. Well, you know what? He got away with one. He, he threw a real, he threw a real pedestrian fastball down the middle. Yeah, 89 miles an hour, belt high, middle part of the plate. DJ worked underneath it. He was late with this swing. Slowly hit to short. John McDonald makes the play in the inning. The Rockies add to their advantage. Willene Rosario with an historic Rockies home run. He's 26, the new Colorado Rockies rookie record. Breaking the old mark of Todd Helton, 5-3.
dare to compare Chevy Silverado, the longest lasting, most dependable truck on the road, Chevy made for Colorado. Well, Yoli Chassin wasn't right. He had nerve issues uh, in, in the chest, and it was affecting how he threw. The numbers were not good early in the season. He rehabs for three months. He comes back, 237 ERA, much lower batting average, different guy. Well, and the, the thing for to see too, is they found out what was wrong. That's a frustrating thing for an athlete when you say, I just don't feel right, yet they can't find it. It's the, It wasn't in the shoulder, it's not the elbow, but the, you don't have the arm strength. Well, Jake Elmore, Huey's going to pinch hit here for Patrick Corbin. Not a real surprise in the fourth inning. It's just a two-run ball game, but the Rockies had dialed in on Corbin the last two innings. It's reminiscent of the start he had back in, in May here at Coors Field. We saw Jake Elmore late last night in that blowout victory for Arizona. RBI ground out. Just inside two and one. Chassin each of the last two innings. Got the first two guys out and then when Missy Franklin was with us that's a base hit. He walked the next two. And then when Joe Scott was with us he got the first two out and then uh, Kubel and Johnson had base hits before putting the inning down. So a lead off pinch single for Jake Elmore and Adam Eaton will come up but triple and a walk so far in the ball game for Eaton. We'll see some stirring. Now in the Rockies bullpen. Carlos Torres is the hybrid tonight following. Yolis. The pitch count at 73 as he works in the fourth inning. The most pitches that he has had since he's come back has been 79 and that was the previous start against San Francisco. There's Carlos Torres. Let's look again at uh, Mr. Gibson's staff. He's got Alan Trammell, Charles Nagy, Don Baylor, Eric Young, Matt Williams, Glenn Sherlock. All five, star. Yeah, all five star. all stars. <laughs> exactly. Baylor, Nagy, Trammell, Williams, and Young were all all stars. Two league MVPs Baylor in 79, Gibson in 88. Five silver slugger awards uh, between Gibson, Baylor, Trammell, Williams, and EY. Two gold glovers, Trammell, and the third baseman, Matt Williams. Three playoff MVPs Gibson of course the 84 ALCS Trammell the 84 World Series with Detroit 16 all-star games eight gold gloves 12 silver sluggers so if an old timers game breaks out I they, like they, Arizona yeah. staff you can put them up against anybody and with Kirk Gibson leading them you know they're going to play tough as nails. A Don, close Don, number two. Don he, Baylor's no slouch himself. He, he's he, he, yeah, he's going to get after you. There's EY. Trammell, what a great player, ET. I, I was, was fortunate to play against Trammell and Whitaker when they, when they were with Detroit in their last game together. It's when I was with Baltimore. You know, for, for me, those Tiger teams up the middle were reminiscent of the Dodger teams where for years and years, nine straight years, you knew the infield. It was it was say, say Russell, Russell Lopes. Lopes and Garvey. And and every year in Detroit, it was Alan Trammell at short and, and the the tremendous player Lou Whitaker, Whitaker at second. Different personalities, but they still played together like they were they'd been doing it their whole life. They knew where the each other wanted the feed. Do you like it on the back side of the bag? Do you want to catch it so you can come across and get out of the way of the runner? 
And Alan Trammell with the straight over the top throw from shortstop. Did never, never drop down. Wasn't the sidearm flip that you used to see from Cal Ripken Jr. Tram would get it straight over the top four seamer. Two and two on Adam Eat. Triple scored in the first. Strike three on Eat. He is dismissed. One out that'll bring up Aaron Hill. Let's take a look at our AT&T trivia question. Who's the all time leader in starts at second base in Rockies history this being their 20th year. Hi there. Aaron Hill uh, an RBI ground out in the first he walked in the second. Hill's a stocky second baseman about 510 or so generates a lot of power. Hit home runs in Toronto and he's hitting home runs in Arizona. Yeah but he's hitting for a higher average with Arizona than he did in Toronto the last couple of years. He had dropped down into the 220s with the Blue Jays. He'll change the scenery worked out. He's basically traded for Kelly Johnson to swap the second baseman. Pitch back. Pitch back last night. That game this year where the, the ball was a pitch back catch and turn <laughs> caught it. Tag the runner out. Tag the runner out. Like it was planned. They tagged him out. It's 10 feet from home plate. It's like the uh -oh. runner's like, what's going on? Come on. <laughs> Two strike count on Hill. And that one goes to the backstop. Moving up is Jake Elmore. See how this one is ruled, but just the angle that Willene went instead of sliding over and turning the glove where you have the palm up and blocking it, he tried to reach out and had the thumb down. Scored a wild pitch. Fouled off. Unfortunately, it wouldn't be a Rockies game this year without a wild pitch or a pass ball. And that's an area of that the Rockies are going to have to improve on next year. And it's both the pitching staff and also Willene Rosario behind the plate. Just those little subtle plays. And even though that was a wild pitch, Willene should have slid over, blocked it to keep the runner at first base so you still have the chance for a double play. Right back at Chelsea, and he caught it. He caught it with the bare hand. Leather, and it dropped out, and he grabbed it with the bare hand. Two outs. His reactions by Jolice. When he's in the proper fielding position when he delivers the baseball. If he had spun off to the side and not have the glove in front of him, he's, he doesn't catch this. He might even get hit by the ball. Pops out. Barehanded. Two down. Breaking ball on the ground to second. LeMayhew will throw out Justin Upton. So a leadoff single by the pinch hitter Jake Elmore. Handled nicely by Chassin. 5 3 Rockies.
three. Tune in today after the Rockies game for Rockies All Access. Dex and Nelly, both are from the Pete State, Georgia. We'll see how both Dexter Fowler and Chris Nelson, their journeys to the big leagues have been intertwined since they were kids. Learn a lot more about Chris and Dexter. Two great kids. Brad Bergeson is the new pitcher for Arizona. He replaces Patrick Corbin here in the bottom of the fourth inning. And leading things off will be Jolie Chassin. Which is interesting. Yeah, it is because he has 83 pitches. Unless. Uh, They're trying to get him a win. Maybe. Oh, man. John McDonald kind of just. But those are the. Threw, threw the grenade over to first, kind of guiding it there. And he almost uh, handcuffed Ow. Paul Goldschmidt. But that hurt. Release's hand. He got jammed. That thumb is stinging. You can see yeah, grip. Right? And you know, and you know what you worry about there, Huey. You've had it happen as a hitter. The initial pain goes away, but you may have that that stinging feeling for an inning or two where you really don't have can't grip can't, the baseball. Can't feel the baseball. That's that's the concern when you go out. And because of that, Carlos because Torres just jumped back up in the bullpen. Yeah, get ready because that thumb. You just tell the look on his face how much it's it's hurting him. But the other the other piece of the puzzle for for Jim Tracy is he's got a short bench. So it could have been I need you to just hit. But you're not going to go out and pitch this next half inning. It's going to be Carlos Torres anyway. But to lead off the inning, I don't want to burn a pinch hitter. Not so many injuries the Rockies have had. Most teams are not concerned about a short bench in September. Well, but it, there's only three healthy guys. And McBride, Charlie Blackman, and Jonathan Herrera. Carlos is... is and, and Cargo did take BP. He did, but would you want to hit him in the fourth inning? No, you're not going to hit him in the fourth. Right. One and two on Rutledge. Well, fans, there's still time. If you're hitting the road, you can subscribe to MLB.tv to see every Rockies out-of-market game online and on your favorite devices in HD quality. Ferguson strikes out Rutledge a one two three fourth inning for Arizona Rockies leading five three.
Fifth inning, Carlos Torres is now in the ball game. AT&T trivia question looking for the gentleman who is the all-time leader and starts at second base in Rockies history. He just happens to be in the ballpark, and he's standing really close to his old position. EY started 398 ball games at second. Chatting up Jordan Pacheco. Good man. And he'll play a year with him in Chicago. Who didn't you play with? Well, I know, but I'm just saying, it, he was so much fun to be around every single day in the in the locker room. He's, and he's that's always had that smile. He yeah, he's always upbeat. He's done uh, done a really good job of helping raise a terrific young man and Eric Young Jr. Numbers on Carlos Torres. The 28th game and. Every time that Jim Tracy's called down to that bullpen and said, get up, Carlos, he's answered the bell. And the last couple times out, the ERA is, is climbing up. But this man, he, he'll attack the zone. He, he's sneaky fast with, with his fastball, 92 to 93 miles an hour. And he's, he's not afraid of anybody when he steps out on the hill 60 feet, 6 inches away from the hitter. You don't see the fear in his eyes. Well, give Chassin credit, Huey. It's Kubel, uh, excuse me, it's Montero. Swings and misses. Miguel is 0 for 2. Jolies gave up three runs in the first inning. There was a triple, a double, another double, a single. It didn't look good. Uh, but he managed to, to work four innings with the hybrid system. And he didn't give up any runs after that first inning. And now his club has come back and, and they have a lead. That's part of the maturing process. And you're not going to have your best stuff. Look out. Okay. But he's okay. That bat well, skipped off the top of the dugout. And a young well, guy. Now is he gonna ask for that one back? Because that's his that's his favorite. Is it will he go trade? You know what? I, I think Miguel Montero is a really good guy. He's gonna say, you know what? I lost that one. I'm just gonna go get another one. Well, that's a good catch. Be careful. Incoming. Fat break into two pieces. Or is it the thumb guard that he wears? And Montero bounces to second. LeMayhew. Throws him out. DJ played that pretty good because when it was hit off the bat of Miguel, you think, does he have to backhand it or is he going to try to circle it? But knowing that Miguel's speed is not the best, he can he can sit back and get a better hop and strong enough arm to make the sidearm throw. Now watch, yeah, you're in the pull mode. You start to go get it. No, I can sit back. And then in one swift motion, sidearm at the first. Ball inside on Paul Goldschmidt. Double in the first. Fly ball to left field in the third. Line on Chassin, four innings, three runs, seven hits, couple walks, couple punch outs. He had one wild pitch. But to finish my thought from a moment ago, you're not going to have your best stuff when you go out to the hill. It's just not going to happen when you're making 33, 34 starts out of the year. Now, you at least has not made that many, but there's times where you feel good out in the bullpen, it doesn't translate onto the hill. Then it becomes a case of how do I compete out here? And that's where young pitchers and young players have to learn how to take it to that level, that compete level. Two and two on Goldschmidt. And DJ. 
knocked it down, picked it up, tried to throw him out. Goldschmidt runs pretty well. So he's safe at first with one out. And DJ would like to have this one back. If you ask him, he'll tell you, I, I should have made this play. Hit it off the heel of the glove, not the webbing. Sometimes it has an eject button if you. Well, if, you if get it, it right does, there. because there's so much padding on the heel of the glove. In your hand, most most infielders don't put their hand all the way up into their glove. There's a, a portion of it that'll sit out, so the glove will sit more into the palm of your hand. And then when it, it hits, it, it hits, and your fingers don't close. No official scoring yet. It's going to be an error on DJ LeMahieu. Doesn't have one of those That's, in a while. No, just his third of the season. Kubel hits it in the air to Andrew Brown. Two outs. Chris Johnson will come up against Carlos Torres with the Rockies ahead five to three. Trying to snap a seven game losing streak. Wells Fargo customers get your two for one Rockies tickets today by going to wellsfargo.com slash Rockies. Wells Fargo Bank. Member FDIC. Coming up next inning, Toyota Talk. Fire your questions to Toyota, followed by a space, 720-720. Text right now, you'll be entered to win a one-year family membership to the Denver Zoo. One and one on Chris Johnson. to the count. Calls for the slider and a fastball trying to paint the corner. Swung on a miss, Carlos Torres strikes out Chris Johnson. Now the Rockies, four scoreless innings after giving up three in the first, they're up 5 3.
Colorado Rockies baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Ford Explorer. Go. Do your Explorer. Ford Explorer. Go further. By AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T Rethink Possible. And by your Colorado Hyundai dealers in America's most fuel-efficient car company, Hyundai. From the DCPA in the Convention Center, a few blocks away, Coors Field, Rockies up 5-3 to three with Jeff Houston. I'm Drew Goodman. Jordan Pacheco's 2-for-2 two two tonight. Single and a double. Second inning of work for Bergeson. Lost in the Missy Franklin and the Joe Scott interviews, the Rockies offense with five runs and nine hits. That's in there one and two. By the way, congratulations to uh, it's been it's been a tough year on the front range already in college football. The bus had a, had yes. a wild comeback in Pullman, Washington to, to get their first victory of the year. And the Cowpokes, your Cowpokes yeah, uh, won with a score late. Well, in overtime. Well, that's right. They had to, Idaho they, they scored. Got, Idaho scored and went overtime. Yeah, and then they they won on a field goal in overtime. So well, Tracy, Tracy Ringle will be tomorrow when he's back on the pre and post game said he won't will not have a voice, but he'll be happy. And that's all we care about, <laughs> quite honestly. You don't want to see the Cowboy in a bad mood after uh, after the, the Cowboys lose. Always want to see the Cowboys win, and we'll have a happy Cowboy tomorrow. Willian Rosario, a single, and his 26th home run of the year, which breaks the Rockies' rookie record held by Todd Helton. 25 bombs for Helton back in 1998. And it's three, three hit ball games in a row for Willene. He's chasing the 270 mark, 269 with that last base hit. A lot fewer swings and misses. When he's also hitting not only the fastball, but he's hitting breaking pitches. Or he'll lay off the breaking pitch knowing that he couldn't hit it. Pitcher falls behind. He doesn't miss the fastball. Chris Nelson lined a double his last time up. And McDonald completes a double play. So the Rockies are done in the six, four, six, three on the turn. We move to the sixth inning. The Rockies five and the D backs three. Look at this swing. Andrew Brown hit one into the players' parking lot. His third big league home run. And then George Pacheco with double in two down the line. And the Rockies took a 4-3 to three lead as Rutledge scored all the way from first base. And then for their fifth run, 
Look at uh, Bill Welke, by the way. For their fifth block, Willie Rosario with his 26th home run. That look back brought to you by Cooney Lexus, where luxury has an address South Broadway in Denver. The Rockies have out hit the D-backs 10 to 7. Brad Bergeson is due up second this inning, so John McDonald will uh, lead things off. And Mike Jacobs. Yep, big Mike Jacobs is in the on deck circle. Second inning of work for Carlos Torres. John McDonald, a fly ball to left field and a ground ball to short. And that's down the line, a base hit. Brown racing to the baseball, and McDonald has his first knock of the night. He had three hits last night. Good ball player. He's one of those guys that has overachieved from a skill set standpoint for a long time. Yeah, like David Eckstein. Yeah. They just they, they find a way to win. They find a way to do the things they need to do that night. So here's Mike Jacobs. Jacobs had a pinch hit appearance last night. Ground ball to the second baseman. Well, Evan and Loveland, there's no official return date for Troy. Sean and Gillette, thank you. It was, it was our a, pleasure. It, it was a, yeah, it was our pleasure and our privilege to to meet with Missy Franklin. And Mike Jacobs swings over the top. Side corner for a strike. Two and two. <laughs> Ralphie's writing us notes now. Well, Buff scored with 10 and 11 seconds left in the game. Quarterback sneak by Webb. And they were down. What was he 31 14? Something like that. That's unbelievable. The Orioles won in extra innings again, beating Boston at 12 9 6. 16 consecutive extra inning victories. Yeah, I think fantasy football is popular in, in, in every office. <laughs> In the country, and uh, clubhouses in baseball are no different. Giambi is available off the bench, Debbie. He's not available. No, he's he's got a little flare-up of what he had earlier, so he's a little under the weather. Okay, my my mistake. He has been available. Grand Junction's biggest Rockies fans. Ryan kissing up. <laughs> Smart. Should look that up. Nolan Aaron, I sent 280 here. something. Do you have it? Uh, you I'll look it up here real quick.
2 0. Oh. Eaton hasn't had a pitch to bunt yet. Nolan's final line 285, 12 home runs, 56 RBIs. Run that out again for everybody. 285, 12 home runs, 56 RBIs, and 516 at bats, 134 ball games. Three and no count, and Bo McLaughlin's going to go out. Josh Altman. Won't take him long to get ready. He's looking maybe two or three doors down for Miguel Montero. Walk has loaded the bases back to back walks after the base hit by McDonald. Nobody out in the sixth inning, and you're inching toward the thick part of the lineup. In fact, you're really there because Aaron Hill, who hits out of the two hole, has a lot more power than most guys who hit in the two spot. A 23 home run, 72nd RBI that he had in the first inning, and a 297 average. Don't make a mistake on the inner half. He does have a grand slam in his career. And that's inside. He's up five to three. Sixth inning, bases loaded. One and one. For this and hits it in the air to deep right center field, and Dexter lays out, can't make the catch. Colvin's got to pick up the baseball. It's a track meet. Three runs have scored on a triple by Aaron Hill. I did not think that ball was going that far. Nor did I. He reached for it, and off the bat, he thought, okay, it's it's a sack fly to right center field. Dexter made a great effort. To try to make the catch, the trail runner Adam Eaton came all the way around from first. Watch where he hits this ball, though. Even though he reached for it, he did get it on the the sweet spot of the bat. Dexter Fowler lays out as far as he could reach, and it just came within inches of going in his glove. First guy scores easily. Look at the speed of Adam Eaton. One and one on Justin Upton, a 6 5 lead now for Arizona.
In the air down the right field line, and that's foul. Two and two. Up and a double in the first. Fly ball center field and a ground ball to second. First base from first base umpire Jeff Nelson. But from that angle, it did not look like he went. More body than barrel of the bat crossing the plane of the plate. Torres has walked three in the inning, and Jim Tracy's got to go get him. Very good fifth inning, and it's been a struggle in the sixth. Montero coming up first and third, and Jim Tracy will bring in Josh Outman. Diamondbacks have a 6 5 lead. Nobody out. idea college invest savings account can be a great gift for your grandchild and yes contributions are deductible on your Colorado state income taxes start a savings plan for your grandchild it's the stuff heroes are made of check it out at collegeinvest.org Rockies had a five to three lead actually they had an early three to nothing deficit so they're gonna have to come from behind again but first things first they got to get out of this sixth inning Three runs in already. Two men on base. Josh Outman into a, a ball game in which nobody's out. 22nd appearance for the left-hander. And a different role now for Josh. He's coming in out of the bullpen. He did that earlier. Then they moved him to the starting rotation. Was sent down. Started there. And now looking to 2013 to see if this is the role. That might best be suited for he in the ball club. The 
Miguel Montero in his career against Josh 0 for 7. Two and out. Aaron Hill at third, four RBIs tonight. That's the first time he's done it this season and also ties a career high. 75 ribbies on the season. Diamondbacks playing a hitter friendly ballpark, Chase Field. Three and out. All of a sudden, nobody can throw a strike. Four players that have eclipsed the 70 RBI mark. One of five teams in baseball. Montero leading the way with 88. Kugel's got 86. Goldschmidt 75. Hill 75. Johnson not far behind. He has 74. Yeah, you know what? I think that five. That Johnson drove a lot of those runs in, obviously, with Houston, but he's now a member of the Diamondbacks. Three and one on Miguel Montero. Walk of the inning, and once again the bases are loaded. And here comes Paul Goldschmidt, striding confidently to the plate. Miguel Montero's reached base with that walk in 20 consecutive games, and he started 20 straight. That's how you're in the right to start 20 straight. And that'll be it for Altman. It's Mayor Escalona. Be brought in to face the right hander Goldschmidt. Bases loaded, nobody out. Three runs in the inning already for Arizona. Top of the sixth inning for the second time in this inning Arizona's loaded the bases the first time they did Aaron Hill emptied them with a triple 
he stands at third. Upton walked, he's at second. Miguel Montero walked, he's at first. There have been four walks in the inning and two hits. Paul Goldschmidt will come up and he'll face Edgemer Escalona. Goldschmidt tonight, an RBI double in the first. Fly ball to left field, and he reached on an error by DJ LeMayhew. Been a rough inning on the hill. Carlos Torres began the inning. Josh Outman threw to one hitter, Montero, and he walked him. Well, now you also have your fielders back on their heels with all the, the balls that have been thrown and the walks. Heads up. You were ready for that. I was mentally prepared. <laughs> To dive out of the way. It's as close as we've seen in a while. Oh, yeah. oh and to the count. Goldschmidt with Kubel on deck. It's pretty deep. Arizona lineup Goldschmidt with 18 home runs Kubel has 29 home runs behind him and Chris Johnson 15 home runs 74 driven in the length of the lineup and you have right left right left and he struck him out with a 96 mile an hour fastball easy heat one out Here's the express hit it if you can you can't 97 tardy with the swing right out of the hand four seam fastball Goldsmith works underneath it and now Kubel It's 29 home runs for Kubel is tied for seventh in the National League. One and one. Tonight, Arizona three for ten with runners in scoring position. This is lifted to deep center field. Dexter's going to have a play. Tagging at third is Aaron Hill. He'll come home with the seventh run. Dexter wisely throws the ball into second base where it needed to go. Moving up was Justin Upton to third. Sack fly for Kubel. 87 RBIs now for the former Minnesota Twin. Chris Johnson hitting here the D backs have hit around in the sixth inning. He hit around last night in the fourth inning. They have 22 runs in a game and a half. On that fourth inning, remember with Alex White pitching, he got the first two outs of that inning. That's a strike. Jake Westbrook got shut down with the oblique injury for St. Louis. How many guys have suffered an oblique oh. injury lately? Seems like it's the injury of the year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Michael Kadire and Eric Young Jr.
That is a base hit to right. Upton will score. Going first to third is Montero on Chris Johnson's run scoring single. RBI 75 for Johnson, and it is eight to five. A five run sixth inning for Arizona. And all five of those runs will be charged to Carlos Torres. And that will close the book on Torres. He doesn't want to read this book. An inning plus five runs on two hits. He walked three. John McDonald started the rally with a base hit. And he will end the inning, we think. Pacheco underneath it, he has it. So 10 come to bat, and half of them score for Arizona. From a 5 3 deficit to an 8 5 advantage. The sixth inning, and they have an eight to five lead. Rockies fans, Root Sports has launched a new interactive second screen experience called Game Connect. You'll get live game stats and head to head stats. Dig deeper into the matchups, chat with other fans in game talk. Feel like interacting? Visit rootsports.com slash Rocky Mount. Mike Zagurski. Is the only lefty in the bullpen for Arizona. And he'll come up to face Andrew Brown with Tyler Colvin on deck. So the Rockies have to jump start the offense again. The last eight games for Zagurski, a 135 ERA. He was designated for assignment. I mean, they're trying to take him off the roster back on August 11th, and then they had an injury, called him back up. He purchased his contract. Well, going back to Kevin Towers days in San Diego. He's never been one that's overly concerned with you got to have a couple lefties in the bullpen. As fact, long as the right handers can, can get the lefties out. That's all that matters. And he has said as much and he always had a couple of right handers down there that handled lefties when he was with San Diego. So oftentimes they wouldn't have a, a lefty couple, at all. Yeah, a couple of years there in San Diego where they didn't have anybody then they then they would only have one and that was Joe Thatcher. Rather have all right handed guys that he trusted rather than just uh, having a lefty to have a lefty. One and two, the count on Andrew Brown. The managers, if they have two or three lefties, they'll go and use those in the matchups. You're always looking for that left hander that can get the left hander out, but if he can't, 
Give me the right-hander with the good split or the good changeup. That'll neutralize the left-right matchups. Now Bergeson's the pitcher of record now on the plus side for Arizona. Andrew Brown retired by Aaron Hill. Tyler Colvin coming up. Corbin gets a no decision. Hey, fans, the last Purple Monday of the 2012 season is September 24th. That's two days from now where Purple and you could win prizes in the first 12,500 fans will receive Rockies rewards coupons. Diamondbacks with the carryover to Monday, the four-game set. Fastball misses to Colvin. National League scoreboard, bottom of the fourth, the Giants. Get closer to pouring champagne. They're up five to one on the Padres. Washington beat Milwaukee ten to four. Gio Gonzalez wins his 20th. 20 and eight with a 284 in his first year in the National League. Desmond, Ian Desmond hit his 24th. Ryan Zimmerman is 23rd. Adam LaRoche is 32nd. Well, for Washington. Yeah, and Gonzalez is also the first Washington pitcher since 1916. Walter Johnson to strike out 200 batters. The big train. That's up the middle. Don't touch it with your hand. Mike Zagurski, base hit. So Colvin with one out of board for DJ LeMayhew. In 10 innings, the cards over the Cubs, 5 to 4. Back up. I thought about trying to snag it. Wisely lets it go. I'll give up the base hit. I don't want to get the broken finger. In the uh, Redbirds' victory, Jason Mott is 39th save. Carlos Beltran hit his 30th for St. Louis. But he's cooled off in the second half. Big time. Mets beat Miami 4-3. to three. It's notable because R.A. Dickey got the win. He's now 19 and 6, so he's closing in on 20 victories. Mark Burley, the loss, he's 13 and 13. Jason Bay, the much maligned Jason Bay, his eighth home run. Scott Hairston hit his 19th. I wonder if Ozzie will say he's going to activate himself again. He said that last night or the night before. <laughs> Maybe I should activate myself. Ozzie being Ozzie. <laughs> It's a, a book, the length of war and peace. Atlanta beat Philadelphia tonight 8 to 2. That doesn't help the Phils. Howard is 14th for Philadelphia. Freddie Freeman is 21st for Atlanta. That was Mike Miner over Doc Halliday. Cincinnati shut out the Dodgers 6 to nothing. Matt Latos now 13 and 4. And clinches it for the Reds. It clinches the division. Yes. They clinched the playoff spot uh, a couple days ago. You're right. Jay Bruce is 34th. Brandon Phillips is 18th. And boy, things have really turned south for Pittsburgh. They lost again. 4 no, no, 1 no. to Houston. Uh, uh, the pitch back in play. That would have been something. Montero off the wall, throws out Colvin. That would have been the, that old Larry Bird. Horse game with Michael, Wait, Michael Jordan. Jordan. Remember that? Off the backboard, <laughs> off the wall, <laughs> nothing but net. This one back to the backstop through the five wall. He picks it up, fires a second, goes between the legs of Aaron Hill, comes up and hits Tyler Colvin. A lot going on. You forgot to mention in, that, in those old spots that the basket was like 30 stories <laughs> right. below where they were. Hanging out. Houston beat the Pirates four to one. Pirates are three games under 500. Yeah, and you know what? Now the playoffs seem like a long shot, clearly, but they're in jeopardy of making it what 20 straight years. 92 would be the last year. Yeah, 20 yeah, straight. That's when Barry Bonds left. That's the last Barry time. Barry Bonds, Bobby Bonilla, Andy Van Slyke, Mike Lavalier, that group, Doug that, Drabeck. That group, and that's the last time they were over 500. American League, Tampa in the eighth inning leading Toronto 11 5. Oh, you know what? Tell Justin Upton he's got to call his big brother tonight. Uh huh. BJ hit his 25th. 25th. Evan Longoria is 13th. DJ LeMay who fouls it off. 
and call Yadier Molina. Tell him to call Jose. And, and congratulate him because he had his eighth home run. But not Benji. But Benji's Benji's on a couch somewhere. He's already placed the uh, text messages. Angels in the fourth, leading the White Sox four to one. Seattle in the six, one nothing over Texas. Ground ball right side. Two outs, and Matt McBride will be the pinch hitter. Continuing in the American League as McBride gets ready to step in in the uh, 14 in 14 innings the Yankees beat the A's 10-9 the A's scored four runs in the 13th inning listen how wild this game was they scored four runs in the top of the 13th inning and the Yankees scored four runs in the bottom <laughs> of the 13th to keep it going Matt McBride coming through with a pinch single to drive in a run Nice job, Matt McBride. He doesn't wait around. He comes right up and drives the run in. Trying to go away from Matt. Short, compact swing. Drives it into left field. Two out RBI. I bring Kirk Gibson out. Make a pitching change. Back and forth we go. It's 8 6 now. We'll get to know Rockies new pitcher Rob Scahill a little bit better. Take a look at the moments of the week. It's Rockies weekly with Jim Tracy tomorrow after the game. Rockies have out hit the Diamondbacks 12 10. Brad Ziegler. That's how you pronounce his name. Ziegler is on for the 72nd time. Submarining right hander. And he'll face Dexter Fowler. A run in. Matt McBride at first. Ziegler is number one in the National League out of the bullpen in ground ball to fly ball ratio. With his delivery, that's not a surprise. Well, and also he 
Not that it, it would happen here, but ground balls are gr grounding into double plays because of the arm angle. He has 18 of those this year. He's particularly tough on right-handers from that submarine motion. And they removed that rule, Huey, where you can put an out on layaway. Like, you turn yeah. one here and get four outs can't. here. And can't do move that. It, move it on to a future inning. You can't do that. And through that so overhand to burn. <laughs> Usually, either sidearm or everything sidearm. Rockies get a run. It's 8-6. Freeze cam. Rockies have hit two long balls tonight, and I mean, they went really far as well. Andrew Brown hit it out of the stadium. One hop on the concourse into the players' parking lot, and then Willian Rosario hit his 26 to deep left center. Brought to you by Frostbury Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Escalona out of the ball game after being pinch hit for. And Rex Brothers will appear here in the seventh inning. Last outing uh, two days ago in San Francisco, a clean inning, just nine pitches. Brad Ziegler, Kirk Gibson wants him staying in the ball game, so Ziegler's going to hit. One for three this year for Brad. Two on Ziggler, one and three on Ziggler. That's all you get. Wanted no part of that at bat. He was going up there looking the whole way, and he took three. And Gladly on his yep, way. Go put his jacket on. So anyhow, in that Yankees game, finishing the American League scoreboard 10-9 over Oakland. They score four to tie it in the 13th. They get one in the 14th. I believe it was a Bañez. Involved in uh, tying the game up in the 13th. Ichiro had a big day. He had a home run. He also scored the game winning run. It was an error by the first baseman for Oakland. Yeah. Banya's actually had two home runs in the game. He had a pinch hit home run and then stayed in the ball game, would hit one later on. Boston at Fenway lost in 12 to Baltimore. At 16 straight. Extra inning victories in a row for the Orioles. Amazing. 9 6, they win it. Matt Reynolds is 22nd. Adam Jones is 31st. Jim Johnson, did you have him for 47 saves? I did not. 
Well, you better do your homework a little more, a little more next, research in the offseason. Yeah, next year. Two and one on Adam Eat. Detroit beat up Minnesota eight to nothing. Austin Jackson is 15th. Miguel Cabrera is 42nd. And this is a bunt that's a little too hard. Look out, Pacheco almost got kicked in the head. The more I see of this guy, the more I like. Well, because he can do so many different things for you, play so many different positions. Knowing that the only option he had was to dive to the base to beat Eaton. He says, I don't care if I don't, I have no catching equipment on. He's out. Two outs, Aaron Hill at the plate, ball one. Baltimore still just a game back of the Yankees in the AL East. Kansas City at home tonight beat Cleveland 5-3. to three. Ubaldo Jimenez started and took the loss for Cleveland 9-17. and 17. What's his ERA now? 5-55. 17 losses. Attendance just uh, announced It just changed uh, off, uh, a scoring in the fifth inning. Paul Goldschmidt's being awarded a, a hit now, and DJ LeMayhew will not receive an error for that ball up the middle. They just changed that. Aaron Hill walks on four pitches. DJ, I mean, you ask him after the game, should I have made that play? He'll tell you yes. But it didn't hurt anything. It kept him from getting an air. Goldschmidt gets the base hit. And there's no runs attached, so it doesn't hurt an ERA. Last night, the Rockies walked eight. Let's close it first. Rockies walked eight last night. They've now walked seven this evening. You don't win typically when you are in that uh, number of walks. Even with the bobble and the exchange, he, it was still a close play at first. But you're right, Drew, with that many walks and tonight, Three of the walks have come back to score. The league average is about 3.3 walks per nine innings. That, that's that's what an average game is per team. Yeah, and five walks scored last night. So when you you know if you if you walk four, you're over the the average clearly. When you start again getting to numbers like seven or eight, there it is. it's just too much traffic. Hill stays put. Right around a third of the runs that you've given up in these two games have scored via the walk. Yeah, and and you, you really can't do it in a, a prime hitting ballpark like Coors Field. And you're going to give up enough hits anyhow. Well, five, five runs scored on just three hits in the sixth inning.
One ball, two strikes on Justin Upton. Checo has it, and that puts down the inning. Stretch time at Coors Field. The Rockies trailing the Diamondbacks eight to six. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Brad Ziegler still in the baseball game, hurling and leading things off for the Rockies. Josh Rutledge, Jordan Pacheco, then Willene Rosario. Rutledge is 0 for 3. Reached on a fielder's choice in the second and scored. Ziegler misses ball one. Rockies have lost seven straight. Trying to avoid their second eight game losing streak of the season. And tough play at third and no play. And you have to charge on the backhand side, yeah. it's not going to be easy. It, I, it either lands in the glove or it doesn't. Yeah, and behind the bag, it's a boot. A chopper, you catch it, it's a do or die play. If it sticks in the glove, you're still going to have to throw off balance. As you go into fair ter or foul territory, it's a base hit for Josh Rutledge, and rightly so. Pacheco, two for three. the gap in left center. He's going to be held to a long single, but Rutledge goes first to third. Third hit of the night for Jordan Pacheco. Good thing that, that uh, John McDonald is not two inches taller. Or has a outfield glove playing shortstop because he would have snagged this. It comes within an inch or two of being an out. Instead, it's first and third. Jordan Pacheco again with three hits tonight. Well, Lean's had a perfect night. Three for three and a big swing and a foul ball. Got the average up to 269 now. Oh, 
to third. Johnson's feed to Hill and on the first double play. The Rockies get Rutledge home. It's an eight to seven ball game. On the 19th time now, Ziegler has induced a ground ball double play. Seven runs means tacos. Well, make sure you uh, go to your participating Colorado Taco Bell locations tomorrow between 4 and 6 to get your Rockies taco special. Chris Nelson takes ball one. One and one. Nelson a double back in the third inning. He's one for three. Johnson will have an easy play. Rockies get a run. They inch closer. It's eight to seven as we go to the eighth. Check the Excel Energy high efficiency inning last inning. Rex Brothers, other than a walk, was pretty efficient. Got a strike out of Ziegler. Fun attempt for a hit by nice play by George Pacheco. And then after the walk to Hill, Justin Upton hit a big old one hopper to Pacheco. Learn about energy efficiency and how to save money in your home by visiting responsiblebynature.com. Brothers remains in the ball game. Miguel Montero, 0 for 3 and a walk, will lead it off in the eighth. Two of the three hitters this inning are left handed. Montero and Kubel. And Miguel takes ball one. Diamondbacks began the day four and a half games behind the Cardinals for that final wild card spot. But the Cardinals won today, 5 4 over the Cubs. And of course, there's some traffic in front of the Diamondbacks if they're to pull off a miracle run. Brewers are in front of them, Dodgers, and the Phillies. Milwaukee just two and a half games back of that. But Milwaukee got beat by Washington 
ten to four tonight. Inside two and one. Who do you like? Who, who's the? Uh, we're we're going to assume Atlanta's the first wild card. So, who's the second wild card? I think Milwaukee's going to sneak in there. You like Milwaukee? I do. The way they're playing, just the the injuries. I mean, that hurts with Jake Westbrook not or being shut down. See who they have left on their schedule. I liked the Phillies about a week ago. I, and they're I reeling off all those wins in a row. Got yeah. back to 500. But they haven't handled. Uh, they haven't had handled the Astros, uh, or they didn't handle the Astros like they should have. And then they uh, lost tonight at home against Atlanta. I'm still going to take Philadelphia. Looking at Milwaukee's schedule, they have the Nationals in the three at the Reds. Yes. The Reds have already clinched, and they have the Astros at home and the Padres at home. So the last six games of the season in Milwaukee. Montero turns on that 96 mile an hour fastball and drives it back up the middle. So a leadoff single. David Hernandez is watching right now, but when it's close and late, he typically handles the eighth, eighth. inning. September 27th, that's Thursday, is Fan Appreciation Day. All fans will automatically be entered for merchandise and autographed items. September Strike out of Goldschmidt. One out. That'll bring up Kubel. Two hits and a sack fly. Two ribbies for Jason Kubel, who snapped an 0 for 23 slide with a first inning RBI hit. Second strikeout for Rex Brothers. Different demeanor from Rex the second half of the season. We talk so much about his mechanics and how he smoothed those out, but the confidence that he's showing on the hill. Hitters see that when they step in the box if the pitcher has confidence or not. Line to right, and Colvin makes a catch. I'll bring up Chris Johnson. Words of encouragement from Oline Rosario. Johnson tonight two for four. 19 hits last night 12 more tonight for Arizona. 15 runs last night they have eight right now. Rocky seven runs 14 hits and after the. Uh, conference from Rosario killed enough time here comes Jim Tracy. Just buying more time for Matt Belial. Throw two extra pitches down in the pen. 
with Belial. We'll come on to face Chris Johnson. Brothers goes in inning in two thirds. Eight seven Arizona. Board. Matt Belisle is going to face Chris Johnson. This is appearance number 76 for Matt. He's on his way to an 80 appearance plus season. And that's not counting the appearance that he had to get Missy Franklin and her arm loose at, at Regis to throw out the ceremonial first pitch today. Well, that you know what? That didn't take that many throws. You're talking <laughs> about a great athlete. Two strikes very quickly on Johnson. Might as well make it 0 for 3 against Pat. Get him right here with the 0 2 count. Strike three. And he did it. So Matt Belisle strikes out Chris Johnson. Still a one run game as we go to the bottom of the eighth.
Drew Brown will lead things off for the Rockies. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority. The Colorado Rockies may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form in the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Colorado Rockies. David Hernandez on for the 68th time. Very good ERA, 90 punch outs, 22 yeah. walks, 90 punch outs in 64 innings. The opposition hitting 184. You don't need to know much else, do no, you? No, that, that 90 punch outs is third among National League relievers. You know, a guy by the name of Chapman is up on that list. But David Hernandez, a 95 mile an hour fastball, hard slider. And he has closed games in the past for the Diamondbacks. That's four this year. One ball, one strike on Brown. Long home run in the second inning, one for three. In on the knuckles, fouls it back, one and two. One time Baltimore Oriole. A boring fastball. It has run on it, late run into the hands of the right handed hitters. Right handers not hitting very high off of Hernandez. And that's another reason he gets a lot of strikeouts. He can strike you out with a, a couple of different pitches. He got Brown on a slider. Yeah, but you're so conscious of the fastball at 95. You have to start your swing sooner. You see the ball out of the hand thinking it's a fastball. Mike Shaw Subaru Supermo shows you and illustrates the red dot of the slider. The right hander's hitting 127. Off of Hernandez. High fly ball to center field. Crowd got excited, but it's a routine out. And that'll bring up LeMayhew. Carlos Gonzalez will go to the on deck circle. Very quickly, a two strike count. DJ tripled, grounded to short, grounded to second. Mayhew still lives in Michigan outside Detroit in the offseason. He Growing up, took a trip to Michigan, University of Michigan. He's just, man, it's just a little too cold there. And he ended up at uh, LSU. They think playing ball in Michigan in April or Louisiana? Well, it's nice to have the kind of options DJ did. Yeah, not many kids do. And you're also going to a program at LSU has won national championships. Yeah, and, and Michigan has yeah, a good program, yet, but L does. LSU is, is one of those special programs and and has been for a while now Giants continuing to lead San Diego six to three in the sixth day they don't usually get beat at home when they have six runs. That 
with that bullpen. On the swing, B.J. LeMay, you got Hernandez a one, two, three, eight, two strikeouts. So we go to the ninth, eight, seven, D-backs. To buy Southwest Airlines, find our fares online only at southwest.com. By College Invest, are you saving for college or just talking about it? And by Ram Trucks, feel the power of Ram Trucks now during Ram Power Days. Eight seven, the score, ninth inning. Mark Stout is out in center field, getting ready for the Toyota Post Game Show. Mark. Indeed, you know what drew the rocks have been rattled the Diamondbacks have come into town and They've been pretty offensive swinging the sticks also baby bullseye Willene Rosario the new Rockies rookie record for home runs We'll talk about the baby bull number 20 and hear from the skipper that's coming up on the Toyota post game show. Thanks All right, Mark, we'll check with you in a little bit Hopefully after three outs in a Rockies rally Rafael Betancourt on for the 56th time Last couple times for Raphael have not been safe situations. It's a case for Rafi to get some work in, but this is a close ball game. Just one run. Keep it there to get your offense a chance in the bottom half of the ninth inning. John McDonald, one for four tonight. Another one of those good stories of a guy that had to overcome a lot of scouts checking him out to get to professional baseball and ultimately the big leagues. Not recruited by any four year school. Growing up in Connecticut, went to a junior college and then. Played two years at Providence College and was a senior sign. For actually pretty good money for a senior. You got five thousand dollars. Hey. You're upset about that, I aren't am. you? <laughs> Would you get a plane ticket and a grand? Uh, Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred. Yeah. <laughs> they loved you. And a plane ticket and an opportunity. Turned out to be worth a whole lot more. McDonald pops it foul and out of play. McDonald tells a great story about the uh, five thousand dollars he bought a he bought a car for thirty eight hundred dollars, and he said I still had that same car <laughs> when I got to the big leagues. And he said I remember driving it into the parking lot, and he said it made there was something wrong with the steering wheel when I turned left it made the biggest racket I mean it, it made it, it just a horrible sound and he said so I didn't want anybody to know so I would drive around the stadium so I had to make a right hand turn not a left hand <laughs> turn so nobody would know that is a great story he finally, he finally hung around he, long he upgraded. enough yeah the, the upgrade Been in a major league ballpark and been in the 
parking lot. It's not a used car parking lot. Just no. leave it at that. Yeah. One and two. Yeah, okay. But whose car doesn't belong? <laughs> Johnny I have to Mack, ask him if he still has it. No, he did. He told me he got rid of it. He go, Johnny Mack, can I get a ride home? No, you know, listen, uh, there's a lot of stuff in my car. Just got called up. <laughs> two and two. He wants to play till he's 40. He's got a contract with Arizona for next year. Yes, yeah, now 11 years of Major League Service time. That's hard to do. You got it 10 years in a week. Yeah, 10 years is the magic number for a player for your pension. Ball to the gap in right center field, and McDonald has split the gap. A double in the ninth inning for John McDonald, leading off against Betancourt. In the last five games for McDonald's, he's nine for 19. Ryan Wheeler. Is going to pinch hit. Four for nineteen is a pinch hitter for Ryan. Fifth round pick in 09 out of Loyola Marymount for the Diamondbacks. 6'3, about 230 pounds. Big guy. Prior to his call up, he led all the minor leagues in RBIs with 90. 90 RBIs in 93 games for Reno. Going to try to move up. Dex's throw on line, but not in time. And on the fly ball by Wheeler, McDonald at third, one out. That'll force the Rockies to bring the infield in. Trailing by a run already. Deep enough for McDonald to tag up. Dexter working behind the baseball does what he needs to do to put himself in a position to throw. But it was just too deep. To get McDonald. You have to watch out for a squeeze with Eaton and McDonald. Eaton can bunt, handle the bat, infield in. And he just likes to do it on the first or second pitch. Was a bluff at third from McDonald. Two strike count. 
eating a triple a walk a strike out a walk. And was out on a good play by Pacheco as he tried to bunt his way on. Big strikeout. Betancourt gets eaten for the second strike or for the second out of the inning. And that'll bring up Aaron Hill. And Rafi put this where he needed to down. And Willene gets down and blocks it. Straight over the top. From Raphael off balance. Out in front swing from Adam Eaton. Hill tonight, an RBI ground out, a walk, a line out, a three run triple, and a walk. Rockies have walked eight batters in the game. Ground ball to third. Nelson comes up with it. The Diamondbacks haven't walked anybody. One of the reasons they have a lead, 8 7, as we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. The Rockies trailing by a run, and they're going to face J.J. Puts here in the ninth inning. Puts with 30 saves, back-to-back 30-save -back seasons, in fact, for Puts. It's the first time a pitcher in D-backs history has done that. 30 saves for J.J. That's eighth in the National League. Five blown saves. He does not walk anybody. He's reminiscent of Rafael Betancourt. Just 11 walks on the season for JJ. That's yeah, funny, and he's a really talented guy. He's had a lot of success, but the last couple of years. I've almost felt like you had a better chance in the ninth inning with then, puts than the eighth inning with, with Hernandez. Hernandez. Because he doesn't have the power stuff like David Hernandez. And a 223 batting average against is terrific. But we showed you the numbers on Hernandez, and he's hitting in the 180s against him. Yeah, and right handers even worse off of Hernandez. Third pinch hit at bat for Carlos this year. He's 0 for 2. Again, the and reason you will. have been seeing him in the starting lineup is he has a sore hamstring. Yeah, that's why I was just going down my list to figure out if he does get on, who's going to run for him? Would it be Charlie Blackman or would they go to a pitcher? That's an interesting one, again, because of the thin bench. 
yeah, for the to, Rockies. You hate to burn two guys. In case, I mean, you're only down a run. I mean, if the, if the thing goes extra innings, of course, Jim Tracy is all about winning it in regulation. You could go Tyler Chatwood. Well, that's a good call with his speed and his experience. Alex White doesn't figure to pitch tonight. You could go Alex White. I was thinking of Alex, but even though he's not pitching, is he down in the bullpen and not on the bench? 1-1. One, 2-1. One. and one. The former Diamondback farmhand, Carlos Gonzalez. Who is the number one prospect in that organization, one of the top prospects in baseball. He famously went to Oakland as part of the Dan Heron deal and then famously went to Colorado as part of the Matt Holiday transaction. Here's the 2 1. 96 nice. mile an hour fastball fouled off. It's 2 and 2. And he's hit well against his former club. Yes. Funny how that works. Yep. Get up for those games, your ego. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you what you, you lost out on. Not surprisingly, the split showed up. Three and two. It could show up again. Split. That split was way up in the zone. One out. Just too high. It didn't break at all. It's like a backup slider. If you could prevent the backup spire, how many times you see that swung and missed? And this was a split that didn't go down to the area that Cargo thought it was going to. Dexter Fowler fouls it off. Two strikes on Dex. One for four tonight. Tomorrow, Jeff Francis against Ian Kennedy, the, the ace of the Arizona staff, a 14-game winner. And pitching better in the second half. And another strikeout, two outs. And that was a better split finger. He had worked him at the letters with the fastball Started that one at the knees and then just pull down as hard as you can, let the ball come out in between the fingers. Up to Josh Rutledge to keep it going. The Rockies trailing 8 7. They were down 3 0, took a 5 3 lead after a four run second. Got a home run from Rosario in the third, is 26. New Rockies rookie record, but then in the sixth inning, the Diamondbacks scored five times on just three hits. Again, the biggest stat for me in this game, Huey, the Rockies staff has walked eight, and the Diamondbacks have not walked a batter. Yeah, because the Rockies have out hit the Diamondbacks 14 to 13. But all those walks act just as good as they hit. 1-0, 2-0. Oh, 
eight runs in game against uh, three against Justine, five against Torres. Three and oh. Pacheco on deck. Ford strike zone. I don't know if you're Josh, you're looking one spot, one spot only, something that you can hit out. 3 1. Well, he hits it in the air to shallow center. Eaton coming on. He makes the catch, and the Diamondbacks have defeated the Rockies. The final score 8 to 7. The Rockies now have lost eight consecutive ball games, the second time this year. They've lost eight in a row. J.J. Putz gets his 31st save of the year. And the victory goes to Brad Bergeson. The loss goes to Carlos Torres. Our Jimmy John's delivery of the game brought to you by Jimmy John's, America's favorite sandwich delivery guy. Base is loaded. It's a 5-3 game at this point. The Rockies in charge. Aaron Hill unloads a triple to right center field despite a Great effort from Dexter Fowler. And the Diamondbacks would take the lead on that one swing by Aaron Hill. Our Jimmy John's delivery of the game. Visit jimmyjohns.com to, to find a location near you. Once again, the final score. Arizona wins it 8-7. to seven. They improved to 76-75. The Rockies with their 93rd loss. Post game next.